Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. All right. Settle down. Um, my name is Lars Nilsson. I uh, program the cinema, and I, I want to welcome everybody uh, to this location. Here's a fact that you may not have known. 20 years ago, and there are people here over the age, there are like five people here over the age of 20, but 20 years ago, like the internet was this exciting place full of possibilities. And one of the most exciting things is that there were four videos you could watch. <laughs> and you'd like fire up your real player, you know, and, and, and watch these videos. And one, the, the best video was a brilliant video that everybody saw, everybody, you know, sent, like you would actually write down the URL on a piece of paper and give it to people. Um, and, and so a lot of people saw that, and we had no clue at the time that this one, was, it was clever, it was funny, it was just, the timing was excellent, it was, it was perfect, it was rude, that the guy who made this was gonna end up being one of our great film artists. It's really true, like one of our great animators, and also like one of the, the, the greatest sort of thinkers who worked in the medium of film. And we never would have seen that coming uh, because we were all just so busy just laughing our asses off at funny bananas and stuff. So, um, but it happened, it's true. And here we are 20 years later. So um, when I called him up, he was so generous in offering to come out and do this, which I really appreciate. Don Hertzfeld doesn't have to do this kind of stuff. So he does it uh, to sort of interface with all you guys and I really, Really, I'm so grateful to Don for doing this. So let's all thank Don for being here. Yeah, yeah. And so what we're going to do is we're going to watch the best 35 millimeter print that's out there that was in Don's garage <laughs> of Rejected. Uh, and then we're going to sit down and we're going to have a talk that's going to go well into the early morning hours, I think about this. Um, and then after that's over, we're going to set up and introduce another little uh, package of films from Don. So, um, but at this time, I would like to welcome to our stage the man of the hour, uh, the man who made this film and many others, Don Hertzfeld. Come on up, Don. As an artist, <laughs> I suffer from my films, and tonight it's your turn <laughs> to suffer through my films. And what better way to make you suffer than uh, drag out a raggedy cartoon from 20 years ago. I was only four years old when I made this movie, Lars. <laughs> it's, not a, lot, not a lot of people know that. Um, I was a talented little guy. Because um, I'm, 20, I'm 24 now, is why, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, so uh, even before this was on every viral email that was ever sent to you in the early 2000s, this was a movie that played in theaters. And um, we have a print. I think it's going to look pretty good. Um, for anyone who ever saw this movie in a theater, and for anyone who's ever been to SeaWorld, we <laughs> like to call these first three rows the splash zone. <laughs> um, and, um, and I asked the projectionist, we're gonna play this uh, a little louder than maybe we should. <laughs> I, I don't, we don't wanna hurt anybody, but I, it was actually, and this is true, one of my theories while mixing the movie was the, f the, the louder something is, the funnier <laughs> something is. And that's probably not the case, but we're gonna try it anyway. Um, and then, um, yeah, we're gonna talk, and I, you know, I've never done this before, I've never just talked about one old movie <laughs> at length, and um, we're gonna just find out you know, what happened <laughs> and, and, and why this happened. And, uh, and then we're going to show some other stuff because, you know, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to leave? What are you going to do? What are you gonna, come on, come on. Um, so I, I, um, I saw some silly hats out there. Um, and, uh, 
And I, I, I don't know if, um, if you're going to throw bananas at the screen or something. I, but um, is everybody ready for this? Are we, I mean, it's like, I'm strapped in. All right. Um, well, let's let her rip and see what happens. And, um, and good luck. <laughs> Looking back now, we should have known there was something wrong with you. <laughs> if there's one thing that I'm sure of from watching this, is that after seeing this, nobody offered you a TV commercial. Am I right? You're wrong. You're actually really <laughs> wrong. Yeah, that, and that's what was so strange. Uh, I, I, was, I was offered a ton. Of, I mean, we all have to, we have to rewind to the late 90s, which is actually yeah. kind of a, a chore. Um, but uh, uh, I had made um, four student films. Uh, cartoons that were um, in the 90s as popular and successful as this, as this animated independent cartoon could be. I, you know, they played on MTV. There was the Spike and Mike's Festival of Animation, and, um, and and that was kind of it. You know, I mean, you 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 there's a festival circuit, um, and I was offered to do a lot of commercials based on that work um, at a school, but I you know. I, I think this has changed now. Maybe I, I, at that time, you know, as a as a snotty teenager, you know, we we listened to Nirvana and REM and Radiohead, and those were our heroes, you know, and they they don't sell out, right? Like, I think that's kind of changed now. But like we were, you know, we, we, we it was a big deal, you know, if your if your if your heroes sold out and did a commercial or did a thing for Pepsi or whatever, and so. I, I had the same sort of bratty mentality about the you know advertising world and working with corporations and um, uh, and so I I, would, I just turned down every th offer I got because I thought you know hell hell no you know, I'd rather eat rice for dinner and um, uh, and uh, and and back then you could do that you could because you, because it was much harder to make a movie in the 90s it was much harder to get your movie seen mm -hmm. but if you could do those two things. It was easier to make money from your from your cartoons and things. Today, it's much easier to make something. It's much easier to get it seen, but no one's going to pay you for it. Uh, and um, but there were still all these old distributors around, so I could I could I could get by doing that. And um, and I but I thought you know how how interesting would it be if I um, actually did do one of these commercials that I'm offered, but just make the worst possible thing I could on purpose <laughs> just to see if it would get on air. And, I, and I, you know, I thought, oh, I could be like Andy Kaufman or something like that. And um, and then I started getting more ideas about it. And I was like, well, maybe I don't need to actually do it. And I can I can I can do a fake me. Um, and I I genuinely well, there there's multiple things. I, I so sorry. There's a lot to talk about. I I. I I expected this to be like the other student films I did and just play the Spike and Mike thing. And for people who don't know what that is, they, they played like the annual Oscar nominees, those cartoons, toured the country. It was a, it was a pretty big you know, traveling show. And they did a, a midnight show called the Sick and Twisted Festival that just played college campuses to just drunk uh, teenagers and and uh, college kids and and homeless people <laughs> I don't know uh, but it, it, but it was like it was just like the, they play the weird stuff and and just um, middle of the night stuff and so I fully expected you know okay this this next one I do is gonna be you know on the road for six months and everyone's gonna forget about it but that was sort of the target audience I had in mind and you know how far can I push this thing but I genuinely wanted to make an experimental film um, and I, I was shown a lot of experimental movies in school. And I was always kind of disappointed that none of them had a sense of humor. Uh, and, and I felt the same way about, you go to a modern art museum and you see the latest thing. There's, you, you don't expect to laugh when you go to a modern art museum. Or, and and, and I, that bugged me because it's this giant chunk of the human experience that's just completely ignored or looked upon from those circles as you know uh, low or something i don't i don't know when i was when i was little the the weirdest most experimental comedy i could look at was monty python like that was really the only thing that was very different and and it seemed like it was pushing some boundaries and as i was learning to animate you know i started to realize you know you have so much control over everything 
why is this shot funnier if I take six frames off of this character's pause, which you can do, and, and why is this funnier if I just play the dialogue backwards and put a cow over it, <laughs> and, 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 and why does that work? Why does that not work? And so with this, it was my sandbox in a way of just, my only goal here is to just make this as funny as I possibly can because I, I feel like the setup uh, with, with the, you know, here's an animator who went nuts making stuff for corporate America, um, was so bulletproof, you could put anything almost between those title cards and it'd be kind of funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then the, 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 I think the last puzzle piece for me was, and this is maybe something lost on a lot of audiences who might be, this is like the, maybe this is the first thing they see of mine, but for the audiences who were already familiar with my stuff for the, you know, four years of these festivals, it was, it was a niche thing. Just seeing my name in the first title card, like Don was approached to do these ads, like that got a laugh in, the, you know, in those days because they knew my work and now it's totally absurd that you know, I would be appropriate <laughs> for that. Um, <laughs> And um, and I and in making fun of myself and in and in, in, in you know doing this sort of you know I don't know meta thing where where it's just, it's not really me but it's me I was able to do things I would not have done otherwise you know because it's suddenly you have this very critic proof idea where you know if someone says it's bad it's like eh, it's supposed to be bad. You know, it's, it's funny. Yeah, it's, yeah. He's going crazy, right? Um, and uh, and, that, and so that was kind of like a creative shield, and I could just do anything, and that was very liberating. Um, and at a certain point, you even were able to get to the point where you don't feel like you have to make everybody laugh throughout. Like in your films, are still funny, but they don't have to be have the certain kind of laugh rate that this has. Yeah. Well, what's what's weird is I I did not expect anything to really happen with this movie like it did uh, and when the fr I mean the first time it screened it was like explosions were going off in people's heads and I and I'm, I don't mean like in a narcissistic way or anything because I didn't plan this or expect this but I, I've never been in theaters back then that have been so uh, you know explosive because this was very Different, and I think that's the only reason people still watch it. Or and, and back then, people were hurling awards at it, and I think it's primarily because it was just so, so very strange and different. Because uh, it was made out of you know out of the the animation circles in a weird way, and um, but I, I still don't understand it myself because like I remember like the very first scene which everybody it's you know it's on the t-shirts and whatever um, I I want I, I animated that very late and I and I, and I and I realized okay I don't want the movie to be funny right away I want it to just be sort of strange and then we can kind of build to the funny stuff so I, I animated this scene late to go in the beginning, and I'm like, oh, he's just, he's, this spoon is too big, right? And, uh, and then there's just, it's just gonna go, oh, it's this non sequitur. It's a guy, he says a banana, you know, it's just, it's surreal. And it, no, everyone, everyone, <laughs> everyone's just gonna be like, huh? And then, and then they're gonna get the joke as the movie progresses that, you know, the, 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 um, and, and then I was like, ooh, I know what I'll do. You know, after he says I'm a banana, I'm gonna put like the sound of a vacuum cleaner. And it's just like, you know, I'm like, I'm like a like Dada artist or something. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and the very first screening, they, they, he's like, my spoon's too big. Huge laugh. And I was like, this isn't funny yet. Like this, I don't, I don't get that. And, you know, and then I assume he's the big and laugh, laugh, laugh. And then, this, then he comes out and everyone's like, ah, oh, like, I'm a banana. He brings the house down. And they're laughing so loud, they drown out the sound effect of my vacuum cleaner. And I was like really upset about that. Was, uh, so uh, to, you know, to this day, you know, there's, there's, you know, maybe I'm wrong about so much of this. Um, but it was, you know, to me, it was still, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, it was, it was punk, you know, for, for its time, you know, because not everybody reacted very kindly to it. Um, I, I, it was, of all things, was nominated for an Oscar, which was a weird, amazing thing. 
but like I, st I you know I was still sort of I mean I was a kid I was I was, I was, four, I was four years old. That's <laughs> really four. Four years old. Uh, no, I was I was fresh out of college, so I was like 22 when I made this. Um, and um, and, and I was after the nominations, but before the show, there was like this animation conference where they invited me for no reason other than I was a nominee and they could get me. And I was willing to just drive and talk to at this conference. I don't, I don't, I had no idea what I was going to do there. I drive to LA and I'm waiting for my turn to talk and it's just a bunch of um, people in suits. It's like a cartoon. You think, oh, this is going to be like a circus, you know, <laughs> we're talking about cartoons, but it's just they're in suits and, and they're talking about like synergy and, and, and corporate tie-ins and designing characters for Happy Meal toys and and it's just one after the other and then I'm the you know I'm this keynote speaker and I'm just like what am I gonna what am I gonna do here and so they play Rejected before they introduce me and it just dies just not a single laugh I mean just the deadest. <laughs> Like, not, it's not even that I feel like they were, like, offended. Yeah. It's just, like, incomprehension. Yeah. Just complete. And, 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 you know, it's just, what are these fucking stick figures? And, 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 and you know, and then I, I and so I, I, I was, I'm introduced. And, I, and I'm, like, I'm still trying to, like, break the ice, you know, and, and be kind of funny or something. And I was, like, so how did that get nominated for an Oscar? <laughs> And no laughs, nothing. And I, and I realized they expected me to answer that question. <laughs> um, and then, and so, but I talked about you know just like low budget filmmaking and making making this stuff with your friends and and and, and I've only seen this in movies. People were leaving like by by the time I was done, like half the audience just walked out on me. And it was just, um, I you know, I, so I think there's still like you know. And I, I mean, I get it because, you know, I didn't go to animation school. I didn't study animation. You know, I was always a live action filmmaker who just somehow wound up animating. And I, you know, I think if, you know, if you, if you study the Disney stuff, which I love, but if you're good at an animating and, you know, I can see how, you know, okay, who is this brat, you know, kind of yeah. in on the scene right now, but I don't know. I don't remember what your question was, but I can. I I, 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 I don't either. I think uh, we may have it may have been exactly. the question about making TV commercials or something. Uh, it's funny because like I was friends with this band when grunge happened. They were called Super Chunk. You maybe have heard of them. And the funny thing was, it's like everybody, all the record labels were after them, and they wouldn't have signed for five hundred million dollars. They just wouldn't have signed with like a major label for five hundred million dollars. But the more the record labels came after them, the more they wanted them. The more it's like these are the guys. That's Did you right. have any of that? Well, yeah, that that was actually your original yeah. question. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. And so I, after I made this movie, I'm like, well, no one's ever going to bother me to do commercials again, you know. But yeah. of course, there's more, and, and I, I think they just they go after whatever's popular, without really understanding it, maybe. Um, and um, to this day, there's there's you know a lot of ads that look suspiciously like this, and it's just you know that's what they do, you know, and and it's um, yeah, yeah, life's too short to worry about it. Do you ever look back? Because now, like you said, things have changed now, and I think now for people selling out is not some sort of for people in Generation X, which God knows why we're called that. <laughs> like that was that was like a, a mark we wouldn't sell out. But subsequent generations have no such scruples. Yeah, I don't know if that's. It's true. I don't know if that's true or not. He said it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, do, you know, I do think that, like today's independent filmmakers, today's independent animators, like I said, it's it's much harder to get paid for this sort of yeah, thing, yeah. and and uh, so you, it's hard to hold it against them because they might, you know, they don't have a choice. There's this vicious cycle where you. Uh, you, you have to direct this music video or you have to do this advertisement. You, you don't, your heart's not in it. You don't care about this, but you have to do it so that you can fund the thing you actually want to make. And, and then, you know, a few people see it, maybe it gets some awards and then you have to go back to, to that again. And, and it's, I've, I've always been trying to tell, you know, all of my friends who are doing this, like just, you have to sell your stuff, you know, you, you monetize it in any way because, you, I feel like there's an entire generation of, of people who are growing up making this sort of thing, but they're being taught that their work has no value because, you know, oh, you just put it on YouTube. 
put it on, you know, wherever, and you get all the eyeballs, and then you get paid doing something you don't even want to, you know, you wouldn't even dream of doing. And how amazing would it be if all these people could just do what they wanted to all the time, and, and what would they make? Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's very different now. But, um, I mean, I was poor then, and, um, I, I mean, I, I never, I, I did a thing for The Simpsons. That's, like, the only thing that, um, that I, I worked for somebody else so far. Well, dude, that's a. I think that's forgivable, certainly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. So, so like, w if you had not had the sort of feedback cycle of being able to play play your films in front of people, being able to see how it works, and being able to watch the crowd just topple over with laughter, um, would your films have been different? Like, if you just sent it out, if you just hit send and you uploaded it to YouTube, and all you got back was like misspelled comments. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's a good point. I think that's another thing that, you know, it's I, I miss, you know, today is is this, you know, this energy. I mean, most people have probably seen this online, but it's just um yeah, it's it's funnier in, in, in this context. It's just it, it's just um and, and for me it's um it's everything. I mean, this is why I because it sucks to to make these movies. You know, it, it's very lonely and it takes forever. I mean, animation is not easy and um uh I, you know, I even when I have films that are primarily digital and they're going to be seen online, I still do theatrical shows just so I can remind myself, like that there's actual human beings out there. Um, and and but I do, you know, I exist in a sort of a bubble anyway, and it's not really often. I mean, even when this, you know, there's it's in it, when this broke through. I, I don't know. I, I can't really tell you when, but it, you know, it happens in these waves where you realize, whoa, this is like. This is not like the other ones. This is, you know, I'm still hearing about this years later. And like just like just a few years ago, I was in like Target or something, and and uh, going through the aisles, and I hear like these teenagers were just like, "My spoon is too big," <laughs> and, and 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 you know, you're like, "I'm fat and sassy," and, and, and I was like, "Oh, fucking Christ!" <laughs> and, and, and I was like, "Oh, you know, they're, they're, they they they." know who I am, they're following me, and I'm getting, I'm getting bullied by, <laughs> by teenagers in Target. And I was, and it's, I didn't, I'm like, what do I do? And I, I, I kind of stop in the aisle, and they just keep going through the store quoting, and they had no idea who I was. Yeah, right, right. right. And, and, I, and it's just like, oh man, like this is something, you know, this, something's happening, or this is, you know, I, I, when, when, you know, back before YouTube, back before really anything on uh, video online, there were literally viral videos that people would s email to each other as <laughs> kind of like vir viruses, you know, just <laughs> compressed, you know, like really compressed little video files. Yeah. On, uh, and the, you send it to everybody on your mailing list. Um, and I wound up getting my own work vomited <laughs> to me th through people I knew tangentially who didn't realize I was on the mailing list. Um, but, but it was just, um, yeah, it's just, it's just strange to exist like, you know, like an animator because you, you, you're, you're in your cave most of the time and it's, it's, it's not very often you get to go out and realize, oh yeah, like this is actually something that people care about maybe. So the, the sort of solitary life of an animator, and I, I don't mean that you're a total hermit, but you're working on, you're sitting there by design working and working and making another sheet, making another sheet and photographing it. Does that, has that led you to the sort of philosophical bent that we see in your subsequent films? Because I think if there's, I mean, there's no denying that your films have taken a real sort of philosophical turn. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I suppose so. I don't know. I, I think, I mean, I think, again, I was really young when I made the student films and this. I was, I was four years old. Um, and, uh, I think a large part of it was, I don't think I've changed very much. I think I wasn't smart enough or clever enough or talented enough back then to know how to put those complicated different ideas on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, I do think also that there was a strange thing happening around this movie. Again, again this was the first thing I did out of college and we can talk about how it was made after afterwards, because that was you know I had to actually build a, a little studio from the from nothing because I had no more university equipment to use. Um, but when this came out, th for the following few years, I started to see it reflected back, you know, for better or worse. I mean that's what that's what you know movies do, and and 
and that's how comedy ages, and that's it, it's it's cool to see. But for many years, there you know you started see, you start seeing all these flash cartoons where it's um, you know just stick figures running around screaming non sequiturs at each other, mm -hmm. and um, and I, I started seeing it so often, and it became sort of. I mean, today the internet, you know, it's it's that sort of thing is like, oh, LOL, it's so random, you know, uh, and um, it's hard to remember that, you know, this was before Adult Swim, this was before, you know, any of that, and that's still why I think, you know, this was re received in it's such a weird way because it was, you know, different for better or worse, and but I started seeing so much of it out there. And maybe I was just wrong, or maybe, for, but for whatever reason, that became a popular thing. And I realized I could never do anything like this again mm -hmm. because it's not going to be different anymore. And I, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't, in a way, not be me because I saw myself everywhere. And again, that sounds bad. <laughs> and I don't mean to take the blame or the credit for any of that, um, any of that stuff, but it was. It was r real enough that I that I that I kind of shied away from it, and the only thing I was kind of bummed out by, because years later the Adult Swim guys were like, "Oh yeah, that's rejected. That was you know that's why we did the da 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 da," and, and it you know spawned all this stuff. But f for whatever reason, the takeaway was the non sequiturs. It was the it was the spouting nonsense sort of thing, um, and. Again, I still don't think it works without the setup. And so I was always a little, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. I'm probably wrong because it's, it's very popular, this sense of humor. But it still strikes me as, as nothing but punchlines mm -hmm. without a setup. You know? and, and after a while, that gets kind of annoying, I, I feel like. Um, uh, but it's, it's, I think it's, it's the easiest thing to do when you see something like this and you're, and you're 12 and you want to make your own cartoon. It's, it's you know, ah, it's, it's just, it's, it's people screaming. It's people just scream, ah, I, I, I'm fruit. And, um, <laughs> and, and, and to me, it's like, well, okay, but I was proven wrong with the spoon thing, so what do I know? But, um, you know, I, 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 you know I, 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 I wished there was more takeaway from the actual you know, the setup to the joke rather than... It's such a brilliant over setup over. in Rejected that it's more than just jokes. People, people who see it as just jokes are missing the fact that, oh, this is this whole setup that the whole thing is, is sort of um, stretched out on. I guess. I, I mean, I, I'm, I feel, it's so funny because I feel like sometimes, as you can tell, I feel like the, sometimes the least qualified person to talk about it yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I'm so close to it that, you know, what the hell do I know? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I can I can see how it's received, but it's sort of like um, I, I it's sort of like I'm a critic at an orgy. <laughs> you know, I'm not I'm not involved in it. I'm just I'm looking at it, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, well, that it looks like they're having fun, uh, you know, but you know. But, and, but, then, and then these other people do orgies that are similar to this orgy, and I was yeah. like, "You don't understand." It's missing this something. This orgy though. had curtains. Yeah, yeah. yeah right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but that, but I think the reason that people, I think the reason that people are kind of in the know, start laughing right away, is because you see the setup and you laugh at how good the setup is. You're actually like, and I think when those people who are who are already pretty hip to animation and were your peers or on the same wavelength as you started laughing right at the beginning, it's because the setup is so great that that's actually funny and you're anticipating, oh man, this is gonna be a great 11 minutes. I, I'm not gonna argue with that, I, I don't know, I don't know. It's, and it's, it's again, it's, it's hard to talk about too, like, oh, how did this impact culture for 20 years? It's like, I don't know, uh, there's no way to say that and sound like a not asshole. You know? Yeah, right, right, no, <laughs> totally, totally. Well, well, why don't you tell us a little bit about like how, um, what, what was your setup like when you were, when well, you were doing this? Um, well, there was nothing. I, 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 so I graduated from film school where I had used their, their camera and their equipment for years and years. Um, but those student films were successful, and I realized I can actually make a living maybe doing this. And so I bought a 35 millimeter camera from the 1940s um, in Burbank, and it was, 
it's if anyone has ever seen like those those multiplane cameras that Walt Disney used, um, it's like a little version of that. It's eight feet tall, easily eight hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, the first thing I did was I bought this thing. And we wrestled it up a flight of stairs, just three of us. I don't know. It was like a beer commercial. I have no, I have no idea how we did this. And I, and I rented out a little studio space with my friend Tim, who, who had a sound, uh, a sound studio in Santa Barbara. And we were above an auto body shop and a carpet cleaner. And so it, it stunk just all the time. And, and so I could only shoot in there at night when there were no fumes. And, but we, uh, just getting it up those stairs, we, and we, we realized this could have easily crashed through the floor and killed somebody <laughs> downstairs, like this, this, this monster of a, of a camera. Um, but I didn't have a projector, I didn't have any way to edit the movie, but I animated it all and I shot it all without being able to see any of it. Um, and then my, my friend Rebecca, who edited um, some of my student stuff, she was now working uh, at the Warner Brothers studio in LA uh, on the West Wing, that show. And so she had access to the Warner Brothers lot. And so after I shot everything, we would sneak onto the Warner Brothers lot <laughs> in the middle of the night. And she had the keys to uh, the room, uh, the, uh, the office of the, the guy who was in charge of all the stock footage for Warner Brothers wow. television. And he had a flatbed in there. He had a 35 millimeter flatbed, which is like, it's like a little reel to reel thing where you could make your edits and actually watch the movie. So we would sneak in there. And this was the old days of editing. So she had a razor blade, you know, with the splice tape. And so if I wanted to cut anywhere, it's like, OK, let's reel that out, make the cut. So it, it took a long time. And so I would just start looking at all of the stock footage on the walls just to pass the time. And it was, you know, it's just like, OK, if if the Golden Girls went to New York City, the Golden Girls weren't on the air yet. I don't know why that, or they, 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 that was an 80s show. I don't know why that came into my head. But if the Golden Girls wanted to go to, you know, they flew to New York City, they'd have stock footage of a plane landing at like LaGuardia or whatever. So I'm like looking at all the stock footage and then there was one shelf, it just said animals mating. <laughs> I was like, what in the heck? And I started pulling these tapes down and I was like watching them as she's editing. And it's just hours and hours and hours of compilations of every single animal you can think of having sex. I, like, not just like horses and, and rabbits, and, but like horseshoe crabs and just things you've never. And I was like, first of all, I have so many questions. This was somebody's job to compile all of this from around the world. And when are the Golden Girls going to need to cut away to horseshoe crabs grinding on the beach? And so most of my memories of editing rejected are of animals mating. <laughs> because that's what I was doing while, while she was working on the movie. Um, but I tried, you know, I tried to have a, a, I bought a projector from the Navy. They, they, it was this 1950s projector, I think, that they used in like the Korean War. To, to entertain uh, soldiers on the on on like b aircraft carriers or something, it was like a portable re projector, but all it ever did was shoot smoke and it, it cut the film in half, and I, I mean bees came out of it, um, so it was you know it was really difficult. But we you know and, I, and when I still watch these early movies, I, I still feel like at any moment it's all going to fall apart. You know, there's this, this sense that they're held together with like barbed wire and spit, like it's just barely there. Uh, and then, and then we um, brought it back to Santa Barbara, where we did all the sound. Um, unlike most cartoons, all the sound, all the voices were done after the movie was cut, and so we had to watch it and just sync to the mouths moving. And then some of it, I just animated mouths doing this because I didn't want to didn't want to bother. And then I was like, well, maybe it's funnier that way. I don't know. Um, and that was really where the most of the experimentation happened, was in the sound room, which is where I have the most fun. And it was really just anything that would make the scene funnier, we're going to do it. It doesn't matter. And, and it doesn't matter what I wrote, if it's funnier, if we play it backwards, if it's funnier, if, you know, if there's cows over it. Um, my, my friend Rob from college, did most of the voices. I did the only voices where they're really in sync. Mm -hmm. 
which is the spoon thing and the banana thing in the beginning. But he, he's, Rob's got kind of like a, like, he's just kind of got like a white guy radio voice, right? You know, he's like, you're watching the family learning, that guy. Right. But I also thought it was just so funny, at least to me, <laughs> to make him do these, these screechy, horrible voices. <laughs> like, because usually when like, there's like someone doing a cartoon voice, like the voice of Lisa Simpson, she actually sounds like kind of like that in real life. Yeah. You know, she's got a high voice. But just to make Rob just like scream in this high pitched, <laughs> horrible thing, because you could hear the strain in his voice, I just thought that was hilarious. I don't know. So when you were, when you were, you don't work on 35 anymore. You're not cutting on 35. You're working in Avid or Premiere or something now. Um, but at the time, so if you wanted to take three frames out, like you said earlier, you got to undo your splice. Mm -hmm. You got to cut those frames out and put them back in. So how, what is the, what rises to the level of, oh shit, I got to undo these splice? Like, you have to know that it's going to be funny if you lose 0 0.324ths of a second, basically. Yeah, I mean, I got microscopic with it. I mean, I still yeah. do, but it was harder then. But, you know, it's just my editor. I'm annoying. Um, but it's um, it's important. You know, I, it's 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 almost musical. You know, like the, the timing of it, because you, you're, we had no audio. So it's that's all in my head. And I, I tried to animate the voices as I thought they'd be performed and time that on, on the page. Um, but then editing it, you know, you're also thinking about, okay, this is going to be playing in theaters and there's going to be a laugh here. So we can't talk over that. Absolutely. We got to have to yeah. pause there. Um, I have, and I've, the, the, the closest approximation I've, I've come across for editing something like a comedy is I read about how they edited Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, and they were, they realized if it's, you know, if Indiana Jones does this action sequence, this action sequence, this action sequence, the third one, the audience is exhausted and, and um, it has less punch. But if Indiana Jones takes a shower, you know, and then he goes on this adventure and then he, you know, he, you know, he makes a phone call, <laughs> um, you know, the audience can take a break and, and it's, it, it works better. And I, I felt the same, you know, with comedy in the sense that, you know, they got to catch their breath here, they got to catch their breath here, and then, you know, if you if you ram it all together too much, it's it's less funny somehow, um, and it's so strange, you know, how much of it is just gut. You know, there's there's it's I don't know much about you know comedy studies or <laughs> if there's anything anybody's written a paper about this sort of thing, but it's um, you just watch it a thousand million times until it's not funny anymore, um, and then you know you try and go back and make it funny again a little bit. I'll never forget when Indiana Jones took that shower. It was an amazing moment yeah, in the I, cinema. I, I got, got, got my breath a little bit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> For anyone who didn't hear it, the question was about, I guess, if I can sum it up, like creativity, inspiration, you know, how, the process, how you know, how you do it every day, that sort of thing. Um, uh, I mean, I think there's a lot of answers to that. One is. I still feel very lucky to be able to do this at all for a living. I've never had a job other than making these cartoons. And that's that's still like I feel like I'm getting away with something. Like I still feel like at any moment, like bankers are gonna like come into my house and be like, You can't you can't make cartoons for a living. This isn't adult life. You have to work in our bank. Um, <laughs> Uh, and so I, I still feel like I'm getting away with something, you know, like, like, and, and so on days when I'm not working on a new movie, because they take so long to make, it feels like I'm wasting time. Like, what the hell are you doing? What else are you going to do? What, you're not good at anything else. Like, what the hell else are you going to do? Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's hard, you know, you know, some days you don't want to get out of bed. Some days you don't want to sit and draw little round heads for another six hours, you know, um, but the... I think what anyone who's ever made a movie or been on a movie set understands after a while is it's 99% boredom and really brainless drudgery, especially with animation. You're, you're connecting the dots in slow motion. You're grinding the story out one frame at a time, and it's, it's, it's a drag. Um, and then you know the 1% of exciting, sexy inspiration is like, 
fleeting and and it keeps you going but it's not you know you see that a lot in movies about the creative process or when writers are writing and they're inspired but most of the time it's really boring and that is the i think the great filter of uh, of people actually completing something or not it's not i don't have any good ideas because I, I think tons of people have great ideas i think if you if you put like all of us are gonna sleep tonight and have these crazy dreams. And if you put any one of those dreams in a museum somehow, like that person would be hailed as this artistic genius. Um, I think the only difference is some people finish projects and other people don't. And um, I think it's, it's a matter of when you do everything by yourself also, like, like I mostly do these days, um, I work seven days a week. I don't really take holidays off because, you know, no one else is going to do this. It's not going to, you know, let's just get this done quicker. You know, there's no reason to, to, to wait. Um, but I, 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 I do think it's, it's, it's just figuring out how to be good to yourself because it's not a sprint. It's, it's a marathon, and the most important thing is you finish the goddamn race. Um, because so many people burn out and they've got the project. Oh, I'm going to write my novel, but next year I'm going to practice with my band more. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, it's, it's just, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think there are many, you know, geniuses out there, but I don't think that that's even a thing. I think, you know, the difference between sometimes Mozart and the other guy is Mozart just wrote all those notes down. Um, but, um, you know, it's, 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 it's not easy, but you just, um, sometimes you, you know, you meet audiences and you kind of, you know, feel like you should get back to work, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's like, you know, the batteries get recharged and, and, you know, you realize, oh, you know, maybe people actually care about this stuff. Do you, do, do you ever not finish a project? Do you have, do you have unfinished projects? Well, uh, not really. Be uh, the, 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 well, there's, I have two thoughts about that. One, uh, I work, again, alone, so I don't have anybody funding my stuff who's waiting on it. So there's no release date. There's no deadline. So if I'm making something and it sucks, I can just keep working on it till it doesn't suck. I mean, for lack of a better uh, word. Um, and, and Rejected was kind of a, a receptacle for all the ideas that weren't good enough for other projects. Um, the, the, the guy running around bleeding Out of his anus, <laughs> um, that was an idea for something I animated in film school, um, it, and it was like supposed. To, okay, it was like a big yellow bear with a pink nose, and it was like a, it was like set up to be a children's show. And he's like, he's like, hey, boys and girls, you know. And he's like doing the thing, and then he starts bleeding, and it's the same. It's the same, you know, thing. <laughs> Um, and, and then he starts like pulling his guts out of himself, and it's just gore. And and but it didn't work. And um, and I and I, I but I animated it all, and I remember showing it to my film teacher at the time. And and all he said was, "I'm well. I'm glad you got that out of your system." <laughs> <laughs> and um, but but I realized, you know, the reason it didn't work was it didn't have the setup. It didn't have you know the the framework to to hang this on. And so other skits and little bits of rejected are pieces of you know sketches and doodles that you know wouldn't have worked by themselves. But now I have this excuse. Yeah. Um, I, I saw um, one one of the other ways I realized rejected had made it was there was there were some Asian bootlegs of uh, of uh, merchandise and and, and um, there was a there was a trucker hat that was being sold. And they put the 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 you know the, the fluffy looking guy on it. You know, he's bleeding. Oh man, what did it say? It, it was like translated and then translated again and translated again. And he said, um, "I am having pooping difficulties." <laughs> <laughs> which is which is kind of annoying because that's almost that's kind of funnier than what yeah, was yeah. in the movie. <laughs> I was in, um, this has nothing to do with anything, but I was in Tokyo a few years ago doing a show um, with um, 
uh, David O'Reilly is a friend of mine. He's an awesome animator. And we, um, we did like this joint show together of both of our stuff in, in, in Tokyo. It was like, you know, we're talking. And, um, and so the, our hosts, you know, they, they printed out um, advertisements for it. And um, they showed us the posters before the show. And you know, it, was in, it was in Japanese text. And then it's translated in English text. And um, the English translation said, um, David O'Reilly and Don Hertzfeld, you know, animation program, together on stage, live. It's going to be, it's going to be a great time with lots of cum. <laughs> what could that have really I still meant? don't know what that means. <laughs> I still don't know what that's supposed to mean. And I, and, I, and I was like, David, what did you promise these people? <laughs> <laughs> but I, and I asked them, I was like, why does it say there's going to be lots of cum? <laughs> and they're like, oh, oh, it doesn't actually say that. I don't, uh, I don't know. Did it say C-O-M-E or the other spelling? Taylor might remember, but All I right. think it was C-U-M. Oh, I, my I, God. Not, I'm, I might be wrong, but <laughs> neither's what you want on the poster. No, <laughs> definitely not. We can't live up to that promise. Oh, my God. <laughs> if, if you could uh, address that crowd of people that you spoke to in that animation festival 20 years ago when you were a keynote address. Like, if you could, do, do you feel like that you have a greater understanding of them now? Because all of those guys were just like, oh, if I could only take off the way that you have taken off and become, like, if those guys could have landed a thing on The Simpsons, they would be, like, forever made, that would have made their lives. Well, <laughs> but, uh, I don't, oh, I don't know. Have I taken off? I don't know. Well, I mean, I mean, they're but they weren't they weren't creative people. That was yeah. the whole thing. They they didn't give a they, care, they didn't care about any of that sort of thing. And it's I have friends who who work on things at the Cartoon Network, and um, again, you think, oh, the Cartoon Network, it must be like you know a carnival living over there, yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and 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 I've been there, and it's it's people in pantsuits, and and it's grim board meetings about. Um, I mean, not to throw the whole company under the train, but I mean, I, I, have, I have people, you know, they're working on shows and they'll be brought into a meeting to, like, w w with full of people and we need to discuss how often your characters blink. Like, no joke, like, we, like that sort of micromanagement. Um, That's Kafka-esque. Yeah. That really yeah. is. I, I mean, I, I was, I was um, before I made this movie even, just fresh out of college, I was signed up to make a, a feature film at 20th Century Fox. Um, they, they had an animation studio. They wanted to take on Disney in the late 90s. Um, and so I was gonna write and direct a, a movie for them, like, 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 like I was like 20 or something. Wow. Um, and I, and it was a, the executive dude was pretty cool. And, but then you realize you're not actually gonna be pitching or working with him. You get you get um, paired off with a creative executive. Oh. And, um, and so I, I'd, I'd meet with her, and, and f the first warning sign was her office had nothing but teen magazines everywhere, like Teen Idol, like, like you know, Tiger Beat, and, and you know, yeah. like 12 year olds with their shirts off, kind of yeah. like, and I was like, what is up with these? And, and she's like, oh, well, this is all research. I have a subscription to all of these so that you know, we can determine what's popular. Yeah. And I was thinking, like, you guys are 20th Century Fox. You're making, like, you should be, you should be driving what's popular. Yeah. Isn't that, like, the power you guys have? Um, and so, like, I had, like, one idea of a thing I wanted to make there. And, and she was like, no, I don't, I'm not going to take that upstairs. What else you got? And um, and that was it. I, and I, and I, <laughs> and I and I and I I felt like that scene in um, if you if you remember the movie Ed Wood, where he just starts pitching anything. Yeah, yeah, right. right. And he's just like the ghoul goes west, yeah, right. bride of the atom, <laughs> and, and 
And I, and I was driving back and forth from Santa Barbara, and I was just like, why am, why am I, I don't want to make that movie. Yeah, okay. Why am I just trying to make any movie when I can still do what I actually want to do by myself, and why am I trying to please these people? Um, and, um, and then they made that, that, the movie Titan AE, um, and that completely sank the entire animation studio, and nobody ever spoke of it ever again. Um, but that was, that was the way it's been. And, I, and a lot of people are like, oh, you know, Don, he's, so, he's anti-commercial. You'll never get him to do something for anything. And, you know, he's doing his own thing. But I do feel like that allergy goes both ways because, you know, like, like Fox at that time and still a lot of studios today, they wanted to take on Disney, but they didn't want to do anything that Disney wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then you're just going to make something horrible that nobody likes. Um, so... But Dude, the, what ideas have you pitched? Well, how much time you got? <laughs> no, your fucking ideas. <laughs> he, wants to, he wants to steal your ideas and well, go pitch them himself. I mean, that's yeah. and that's that goes back to the other question about like you know, working hard. You know, it's the I've never had a, a problem of writer's block. I've never because these take so long to make. You've got the next twenty things you want to do while you're grinding through this one. Um, and, and so if I'm not working on something today, nothing's going to come out in two years, and they just keep getting backed up and drive me nuts. Um, but I'm, um, I'm working on uh, a couple of things. Um, um, and and the, I think the landscape has changed a lot since then. Um, there's there's uh, a lot of platforms now that are willing to do, like, everything Disney doesn't want to do. Um, so... Uh, I don't know. I'm optimistic, and um, you know, I, I hopefully I, I will be able to one day walk into a room full of animators working for me, and I can tell them everything they're doing is wrong, and <laughs> go to the beach. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, it's 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 hard because like I think everybody at those levels, you know, they'll they'll bring up your pitch to the higher up, to the higher up, to the higher up, and they're all just protecting their jobs. Mm -hmm. And so nobody ever wanted to do something so strange that they get fired. So to answer your question, a couple of Boston cops, one's old and crusty, <laughs> one's like a brash young rookie. I think that's pretty much... Yeah, one yeah. is a good cop, Yeah. the other's a bad cop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for supporting AFS, especially. Thank My you, this thank is, you, you know, thank you. Yeah. It, important um, and yeah you know I um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding I'm gonna get back to work tonight um, and um, and that's what I do and but you know you guys are the reason I do it and and this is um, you know it it's a kick in the ass for me to you know to work a little faster so um, I'm, I'm, I'm none of these movies would exist um, without without you literally because there's no government support. There's no. There's no commercial stuff. It's. It's. It's all ticket sales, Blu-rays, whatever. Um, and so it's. This is all for you. It's, you've. You've paid for it, <laughs> and and it, and, it, and it belongs to to all you guys. So, um, thanks for listening. And um, I don't know. I'll be back in a little while. Uh, so. Thank you so much, Don. Don Hertzfeld, ladies and gentlemen.